so first of all, hi, and thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview with me. How are you doing and how have you been during this crazy year? Uh, I've, you know, I've, I've been doing fine. I've, uh, I'm being asked this a lot, which I appreciate. Actually, I always see the question, how are you as some kind of nice thing that you just say. And these times I learned to appreciate it because most people are really like seem to be interested in it. And I can just repeat myself here. Um, I'm sitting here in an interview with someone from Finland asking me questions about my band, being interested in what I'm about in the things that I'm doing. So this makes me one of the privileged of the privileged people in the world. So where kids are starving, like just a couple of hundred kilometers away, you know, so I really don't want to complain. But if I allow myself to complain for a couple of minutes, of course, it sucks you know being like f fighting for being a musician for 20 years and then finally being at the brink of being able to make your hobby actually your job and part wise a lot of lost already is my job now i can even say that it's my let's say my 60 percent main job like b besides the other thing i'm doing things i'm doing and then everything gets cancelled. Of course it sucks. But as I said, I don't want to complain. So um, we have the best fans in the world, like buying our merch and going to our online streams. And yeah, we have found workarounds. But these things for me are only workarounds. I don't want to get used to them. I want to go back to live business. Let's not dwell on this whole Corona situation. You have better things to look forward to, I guess. You have a new double album coming out, Judas. Um, yep. first of all, where did the idea for a double album come from? Is it something that happened during the process or was it always something that you wanted to do connected to this concept kind of, um, I knew from the beginning that this seventh album needed to be something big, but I did not think about a double album at first, but, uh, sorry, when we started like really go like researching about the whole Judas topic, which we found so inspiring. It was in early 2020. We were on European tour uh, in January and February, also in Finland. And um, then we were like, okay, we, we do like a normal record and maybe we do like a very special visual concept for it and blah, 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 whatever. And then in uh, March, April, the whole pandemic kind of really, really hit us like every everywhere. And we were just planning the whole timing for the year because we don't produce a record like, hey, let's write some songs and like, okay, one is ready. Let's just record some drums, <laughs> maybe tomorrow. We don't do that. We we really plan a record very strict and we plan it out from June 2020 to March, April 2021 um, from the first day of songwriting till the final master. And um, then we said like, okay, all shows are being canceled now. Like 100% of the shows are being canceled. We have like 100 more days. We were, we had like 100 shows planned actually in this time. And we're like, we want to use these days. We don't have any excuse to not use these days. So we said, let's do a double record. And um, yeah, actually we wanted to, want to do the songwriting in Finland. We wanted to do it in, uh, in the very north of Finland in June 2020, like at a place where it never gets dark and being inspired by this whole thing and uh yeah we couldn't do it so the first thing we do when the pandemic is over and we have to write a new album again we're gonna do that <laughs> yeah yeah i know that you also work a lot with yanni Pehu of uh swallow the sun right yeah yeah it's 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 still hard for me to say his surname Pehu, is it right yeah, I'm not finished Poo -hoo. myself, so I guess it's Pehu. <laughs> Poo -hoo. Yeah, I, I think he told me that because for a German, it's it's weird because the E and the U in uh, German is Oi. So in German, you would say Jani Poihu. So it's a Po Pohu, Jani Pohu. Yeah, it's yeah. He's 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 one of the the most brilliant guys. It's like he's so 
inspiring. He has a way of working with melodies and sounds and he, he can he can create songs that have a pop appeal, which I love. And he also loves, we both love good pop songs, but still have this progressive vibe that things ha are happening, which you really do not expect, especially in the kind like in the way he merges melodies and harmonics. It's just astounding. And um, I can only say the best things about him he, because he inspires me a lot. And um, I'm very happy that I could work with him again, also on songwriting and also on some co-production things for some songs, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Good to hear. Yeah, I think you must be excited about this new band then as well. I must say this new band of, of his, this Mercury Circle, has become one of my most favorite go-tos when I want to listen to new music. It's I, I turn that on a lot lately, I must say. Now, uh, before we start, start talking a little bit more seriously about your album, I just I went to the store today and uh, it occurred to me that your album is called Judas and the first track is called Priest. And <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny, but I was wondering, was there an intentional wordplay there or is it just a complete coincidence that that kind of happened? Um, it, at first, it was a coincidence. Um, when we started writing songs, um, we always write together as a team with our band and live crew and some musicians from other bands, like Yanni, uh, because I find it like most inspiring to not be like just uh, reduced to the five guys you always see. So we, we love to open up the circle of songwriting. So I asked my colleague from the studio, Eike, which I already wrote lots of Lord of Lost songs for, I was like, hey, I want to do this and that and blah, blah, blah. I told him a little about the concept. And before I actually mentioned Judas, I was just telling him, him about like soundscapes that I had in mind. He said, yeah, you know what? When I always when I think about you guys, I always have these weird tribal drums like dum -da 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 -da, like in this Inception movie. I always hear that and then I hear priest. And I was like, yeah, that sounds very strong. And I said like, hey, Ike, but listen, the album is going to be called Judas. And he was like, yeah, that's going to be weird. And I said, and I said, yeah, that, that's, that's really weird, but it's great. Let's just do it. So it was a coincidence. And then we were like, yeah, why not? Why not just do it? And then we worked like with many weird references. Also in the song priest, you have a line that says, uh, and Jesus, he knows me and he knows I'm right, which is clearly a quote from a Genesis song. But in Priest, these words are coming out of the mouth of Judas, saying that about Jesus. And this kind of turns this whole quote so much, which gives it such a new meaning that we also found it fascinating. Then we have in our music videos, we have the Bohemian Rhapsody Queen reference because you see the whole band as a choir. And so we, we worked with lots of these references, sometimes just some signature sounds, which you know from old Michael Jackson records or from other 80s records. So there's actually a lot, of, lot to discover on the record because it was a lot of fun like placing all these Easter eggs. Yeah, that's, uh, I didn't discover them all, but it's like really fun to hear that as well. Uh, also, this intertextuality things are, are really cool to hear. So for me, what, what I also felt is that this, uh, because I come from a visual art background, but for me, not every album I would consider as art, maybe, but this feels like art, kind of. Do you agree? Or Thank you very much. Of course, I agree. Um, it would be weird if I wouldn't as because we, I see ourselves not as musicians. I, I see ourselves more like concept art artists that do like 75% music <laughs> and the rest is like the overall concept. So I really thank you for that because this is what I had in mind. Uh, we were like, we want to create music. We want to create art music and visuals which are so much connected which give you like a cinematic feel that if you know about this and you just listen to the music it's more like let's say a movie for the ears so when you listen to the album i also wanted the, this cinematic uh, aspect like you listen to one of these over length lord of the rings movies with this break in the middle which would be then the two cds and so 
so yeah thank you very very much and it's it's not easy to to create art in that way because also, especially in the dark kind of field which we very much like which we work in not because we try to be part of any kind of dark scene which is just something that what that we really adore um it's the, you know it's so easy to be just too um what's a, what what's a white right word for it? like too kitschy you know what i mean like too uh oh fuck i just lost the word stupid german you know what i mean it's it's so easy to be like like most pathetic and of course in in the ears of some listeners uh in the eyes of some viewers we we are already pathetic i'm i'm fine with that oh cheesy cheesy that was the word i was looking for you can get so cheesy so much and i mean it, in a way I, i i really don't i really don't have a problem with being cheesy but uh sometimes it's like it's just very quickly it flips with this kind of thing and we really try to to kind of hold the balance between like doing serious art and still being us so it wasn't easy yeah that makes sense especially in your genre there's actually a lot of bands that have this more like religious themes for for instance in their music um but where would you say the the fascination for the the character of judas came from with you guys This is the thing when you say like religious themes of course it's a religious theme topic whatever um but we did not try no let's say differently uh first of all this record is not pro or anti christian or pro or anti religious we don't try to uh tell people like hey judas was a good guy whatever to to be to i don't know to to find like a new aspect of christianity we don't do that to tell people hey the whole bible thing and whole christianity is super bad because judas actually the good guy we, we're not doing that it's not what it's about of course like we we have an agnostic point of view on that kind of thing so we we do not say that there's a truth in belief or truth in science whatsoever like being agnostic means that you're open and tolerant with everything and everyone actually which people most people don't understand what we find most interesting about it is that Judas as a character his role is being so much reduced to just being a traitor and there's so much more behind it and when we started digging uh, also in this uh, gospel of Judas this apocryphal script which got forbidden by the catholic church it was so super inspiring to actually see Judas more let's say it like if if i should explain it to to my 10 year old son i would say hey what batman is for gotham sometimes batman also needs to be the the bad guy he needs to be the scapegoat because gotham needs it this is judas in this story you know and um what's so interesting about it, when you start digging you find so many different point of views also in the four gospels in the bible and also in like different um analysis uh, interpretation that you can read that go from judas the traitor to judas the actual savior and some uh theories are so wacky they all also say that judas and jesus switched places and actually judas died on the cross and there's like so many things and that was just super inspiring and we just wanted to reflect in that album on this kind of variety of that gray area in between not by telling one story like Judas does this and now he does that it's more like the overall inspiring theme for different kind of single topics yeah that sounds like i mean history in general interests me so i i think it's fascinating you guys like really dug into it and and researched about the different angles of of you know this character um but anyway you also mentioned you're of course not pro or against um christianity but if you take for instance uh the musical and the film Jesus Christ Superstar uh it was created in the 70s of course and there was a lot of backlash against it from religious groups you know um because it shed Judas more in a positive light but i was wondering do you think that obviously the world has changed a little bit and religion is for european countries maybe not so important anymore but do you think that the album might get also some some comments from these sorts of religious groups or something like that 
I need to th say three things here. First of all, I must confess I have never seen uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, I was aware of that musical, but I didn't know what it was about. I just found out what it was about when people told me in comments on social media. I was like, oh, wow, fuck. Maybe I should have watched this before writing the, the, the album with the guys. Now I must say I'm thankful that I didn't because it might have been like too inspiring. Like you, you, you kind of follow the same path. Now I really want to see it. But I said I will do that when Judas is out because it's like super fascinating. Of course, like talking about Judas is not reinventing the wheel. Not at all. I, I, I never said that. It's, it's, it's not a new idea. Um, that first. Um, on the other side, uh, in a modern world, how if you ask how important religion is, let's put it this way. I, I differ between belief, religion and churches or let's say institutions. Belief can be something whatever. Me as an agnostic, I also sometimes feel um, a higher power whatsoever. Like I have moments in my life where I'm like, okay, this this was weird. Something just led me. But I cannot define it. So I would not call it a religion. If you define this higher power, I would call it a religion. Also mythologies where you say like where's the difference between mythology and religion if someone believes in thor and like the northern mythology isn't it his right to still call it a religion isn't it arrogant to say no that's mythology that's religion that's mythology whatever that's a different topic but if you like g find yourself in any kind of these these aspects of the different world religions you find your higher power there then it's a religion but you don't necessarily need like a house for it. If you need a house for it, then you need an institution, then you need, need a church. So I think nowadays, I do not think that belief or even maybe religions in the middle have become less important to people. I just don't, I just think that people are daring to put it in other words, same as genders, you know? You don't have to decide anymore like, Am I male or female or whatever? Even I for myself, as a male heterosexual man, I must say that I don't even find my place there because I am not anything like I was told what a real man is. When I look at all the real men, I was told all these things when I was a little boy. I'm not any I'm not anything like them. Still, I'm heterosexual. And I have a penis. So what am I then? <laughs> you know? So I you don't you do not even have to define it for yourself. Like make up your own religion. It's for me it's also true. But I think sorry for the long answer, but I think that institutions are becoming less and less important. And I'm actually thankful for that. Because also if you look at Christianity, also there are also like gospels, for instance, the Gospel of Judas, which has parts that say that you do not find God in the church. You find it in yourself. So that makes me wonder why it's being forbidden by the Catholic Church. Hmm. There you go with all those Da Vinci Code movies with like like uh, Tom Hanks, which also have this topic, which are super inspiring. So to sum up that question, um, I, I think uh, human beings, even scientists, will always look for higher power. The, uh, I mean, it's, it's actually the same thing. If you want to explain the world, it doesn't really make a difference if you're trying to look at the molecules in the uh, like microcosmos or if you try to look at the universe on the other side and others try to find God. Others, I don't know, do both and f are finding a way to combine it. Others already like explain microcosm and macrocosm with God or by God or in God. So whatever. But actually, I think institutions are becoming less and less important, which is a good thing because most of institutional-led beliefs are working with fear and oppression against the believer itself. And I always say as an agnostic, hey, if, this, if all of this is true and there's a God that created all of us, then this God would embrace everything that makes us human. And 
wouldn't do all the shit that the institutions are actually telling us to do. Yeah. Thank you for that. That was interesting. <laughs> um, now let's dive a little bit more into the writing and uh, the bringing this album kind of together. Um, you mentioned that the original plan was to go to, to Finland and write there. Yeah. Um, but how did you guys go about it when, you know, the pandemic hit basically? Yeah, we just did it in the studio. So it, we, we wanted to have this uh, being away from home feeling like this holiday feeling, but we couldn't. So we just did it here and we said, we are professionals, we can do it. Of course, Finland would be great, but if not, we can do it here. There's no excuse. So just shut your mouth, go to work. Now, there's also something in the, the sound of this album that I thought was um, something kind of calm, maybe, you know, the, the kind of feeling you have when you hear a church organ in a church, for instance, that, that kind of massiveness to the sound. I'm not sure if I'm making any sense, but I was wondering if that's somehow an, an intentional thing. It's super interesting that you say that because that says that the record actually did what it what it meant to do because you listened on this record you hear a lot of church organ and what we said is we do not want to just switch on a keyboard look for an organ sound and then that just like hit the keys what we did for that record we recorded a real church organ in a real church and we did the same with a real choir, with real strings, with real piano in a big hall. So everything on that record is real. And this is what we actually wanted. We wanted to have this massive wall of sound with a very special guitar sound. So we didn't use regular metal amps. We worked with like different kind of distortions, which makes you, which forces you to relearn the instruments because you can't play the usual stuff. And we wanted exactly this feeling that you have when you go to a church and listen to that massive organ sound, which kind of gives you this very special feeling. And the only way is to record a real church organ. That's what we did. <laughs> That's cool. Um, now, I also read today, uh, I think Mercury Circle posted about it, that you're doing this song experiment um, with Viva Vendetta, one of the songs, um, yeah. where you let artists basically do their own thing. Can you talk a little bit more about what that is going to be like? Um, yeah, it was super interesting. It was a song experiment. It was an experiment which I wanted to do since uh, when I started studying audio, um, uh, the, the whole audio stuff and music production. And um, I never did it because I never really had the chance. And now I, ha I had, we had the time to do it and all other artists had the time to do it. And what I wondered was when I would give a finished instrumental to any kind of artist, without telling him the name of the song, without showing him my melodies, my lyrics, without even telling them that the album is going to be called Judas and would let them treat that instrumental like one of the guys in their band has written it and they were forced to write their own melodies and lyrics on top of it, what would actually happen? So I asked like, I don't know, 40 of my friends in other bands because I expected like five of them actually doing it. It's the same thing with remixes. You know, you ask like your friends for a remix and they like, yeah, I don't have time. Or they say how much money or they say yes. And then they, you never hear from them again because they're musicians. And um, in this case, they all said yes. And then some didn't have time. And so we ended up with like having 32 versions of the same song. And it's just immense. It's, it's mind blowing. It's, it's like, in some versions, even the entire genre you listen to is completely flipping just because of the voice of the singer and how he's interpreting on that kind of playback. It's mind blowing, really. Were there any songs that kind of had the same feel like Fiva Fandetta? Yes, some some kind of kind of got close. Even the topic kind of got close and some were like super off and super different. It's very very interesting and th they were also allowed not to only put um uh, lyrics and vocals on top they also could put like other stuff on top for example saku or fear of domination he he just put like electronic stuff on top you know and and this and that it wasn't allowed to to 
get rid of things and it wasn't allowed to rearrange the parts, but they were allowed to put on top whatever they wanted. There is no point uh, in asking you right now how it's with live shows. So any last thoughts no. want to share with your fans uh, to wrap this up? It's like, uh, I'm always happy to talk to s someone of Finland. It's like beside my home, it's it's my second favorite country. And I really miss going to Helsinki. It's this, it's It always feels a little like my hometown Hamburg, just a little smaller and colder. And um, it's like being there is like always like one of these magic memories. It always, it, it feels a little like the memories that I have um, of have about like like being on ho holiday as a child you know it has this kind of magic and i really miss that so i'm super happy if i can go to helsinki again and if there's not not going to be a show i'm just go there for a weekend and go to hasburger and fly back 